operations, uh, business analysis, project management. And then eventually, about two, three years back, I transitioned into what's called as a group data office or chief data office. Um, outside of work, my interests are, you know, all outdoor centric, trekking, yoga, football. Um, so I play football five days a week. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, just want to give you a quick disclaimer that whatever views that I'm expressing in this presentation, these are my personal views. Uh, they're not my company's views. OK, uh, so with that, let's jump into CDMP. Uh, so what is CDMP, right? Uh, is CDMP stands for Certified Data Management Professional. So uh, sorry, just one other thing. Uh, please feel free to pause me at any time if you have any additional questions to ask. You don't have to wait until the end of the session. Um, and as we go through, you can just let me know. Uh, you can just speak up and ask a question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so CDMP, yeah, CDMP stands for Certified Data Management Professional. Uh, I came across this certification about two to three years back, and I had bought the DMBOK book. And it was always, it has always been on my mind that I wanted to do a data management certification. And over the last one year, what I noticed on LinkedIn, especially with all the data professionals that I'm connected with, is that I've, I've started to see an increasing number of people do CDMP. And once they completed CDMP, they were sort of posting about that on LinkedIn. And that's when I realized that, you know, this is the certification has become much in demand and a lot of people are attempting to do the certification. Uh, so there was a recent webinar as well that I attended on data governance, uh, which was uh, sort of US based. And even in that webinar, uh, there was a data expert, industry data expert, who mentioned that CDMP is the gold standard in the data management field. Uh, there was somebody who asked this question as to what uh, data management certifications they can do. And the overwhelming answer was CDMP. Uh, so it was good to see that CDMP was validated by industry experts as well. Now, this is a certification that was created by DAMA. So DAMA is the uh, sort of international body uh, for data management professionals. So you have DAMA International, which is a parent body, and then you have country chapters and then local city chapters as well. So in India, we have the DAMA India chapter, uh, which uh, you know a lot of us are members of, including myself. Um, so this particular certification it sort of gives you the foundational knowledge uh, the foundational skill sets in terms of data management and this spans across multiple areas so it's data governance data quality uh, metadata management and even more on the technical side in terms of data architecture data warehousing data modeling etc so uh, i'll just pause here if you have any questions before i jump into the next slide okay so this is uh, this sort of represents uh, most of this information is from CDMP info. So I sort of tried to uh, bring this all together into this one PPT. So there are 14 topics uh, that one needs to focus on uh, from an examination perspective. And the first six uh, topics you would notice is all about 11% each, and then there are two that are 10% each. So the, the, the six topics, these are the key topics, uh, amounts to about 64% of all the questions that get asked. So these are very, very important from an examination uh, preparation point of view. So you have data governance, data modeling design, data quality, metadata management, master and reference data, the data warehousing business intelligence. And then you have another four to five, which are all 6% each in terms of the number of questions uh, that, that could get asked. So you have security, data storage, data integration, interoperability, architecture, and then there's document and content management. And then you have the last two to three, which is 2% each. So this sort of gives you a very clear indication of what areas you need to focus on uh, when you are attempting um, or you're, if you intend to attend uh, the CDMP examination. So a little bit about the certification. What is the certification all about, right? So there are four levels. So you have associate practitioner, master, and fellow. Uh, and the way this works is it's a hundred exam question uh, that you have to attend. You have 90 minutes in total uh, to complete hundred questions. 
And depending on the marks, the percentage of marks that you get, DAMA awards you the levels, the certification level. So if you get a minimum 60% pass, you are a CDMP associate. If it's 70% and above, it's CDMP practitioner. 80% and above is master. CDMP fellow has a very separate requirements. You don't have to write an exam for, for CDMP fellow. This is somebody who has 25 plus years of industry data experience and uh, the process to get CDMP fellow is very different. There are only about three or four CDMP fellows globally um, within Dharma. So um, once you attempt an exam and you clear your exam, that examination is valid for three years. You get a badge issued. This badge can be verified online by yourself and also any your current or your prospective employers. And uh, when you sign up for the examination, your first exam payment, that includes a three-year individual membership of Dharma International by default. Yeah. So uh, the practitioner and the fundamentals, right? Uh, so sorry, the practitioner and the master. So in terms of master, there is some additional requirements. Um, you need to submit your CV and you should ideally have more than 10 years of industry experience uh, in terms of data management uh, to be a CDMP master. So in addition to passing the uh, foundation or the fundamentals exam, you also need to provide your CV, uh, which would then be reviewed by a CDMP fellow. These are some of the exam uh, FAQs. Um, so it's a hundred multiple choice question, okay? And you have exactly 90 minutes to complete. Uh, most of us I know would have studied in an English medium school. That is if English was your first language. So if you studied your science, your, math uh, your mathematics, your history, social science, everything in English, English is your first language. But if English is not your first language, if it is Hindi or any other regional language, you can opt for what's called as an ESL version. So you get an additional 20 minutes to complete the exam. Uh, when you sign up for the examination, uh, you get a 40 question data management fundamentals practice exam. So this is a free uh, 40 questionnaire practice exam. And this is highly recommended uh, for everybody who's attempting the exam because that sort of gives you a good indication of what kind of questions would will come in the, the actual or the real, the, the real exam. And I've actually seen in my personal experience, there were one or two questions from the practice, from the 40 questions uh, practice exam that actually did come in the real, the real exam. So you never know, you may be lucky. <laughs> uh, once you purchase an exam, there's no time limit for when you can start the exam. So I can purchase the examination today and I can write the examination, say one month, two months or three months down the line. Uh, but I would recommend that you set a date in terms of your studies and you set a firm date in terms of when you want to write the exam. Uh, so you then stay committed to that date. The exam is open book. Uh, so this is a question that a lot of people have. Uh, what does that mean? That means that when you're writing the examination, if you have a printed copy of the of the DMBOK book, you can open that book and you can refer uh, to any section of that book to assist you in writing, in selecting the right choice for the answer. But uh, do not overly rely on this uh, because time is of essence. Uh, a lot of people may assume that because it's open book, it's easy. Once the exam starts, you can start looking at uh, the questions in the open book. That is not how it is. Uh, once you've completed all answering all your hundred multiple choice questions, if you have any time saved after that or time left after that, that is when it is recommended that you look at the open book. Um, if you have a PDF copy of the book, you can also refer to that. The only uh, stipulation is that your PDF copy of the DMBOK book should not be in the same system uh, as the system that you're giving the examination in. So if I have a laptop here, I'm giving my exam and I have a PDF version of the DMBOK book, that PDF version should be open in another laptop uh, or CPU or an iPad. Yeah. So uh, you have to make a choice. Uh, you know, which one do you prefer? Is it, do you like, do you, do you find it easier to refer the PDF version or do you find it easier to refer the, the hard copy of a book? So that's, that's a personal preference. Now, what you get is a DMBOK, uh, what you have to buy is a DMBOK book 
2 it's called version 2 and uh, this is the the bible for your uh, certification your cdmp certification so this is very similar to your pmp certification where you have a pm uh, so this is called the dm book data management body of knowledge and version 2 is the latest version so this is the book that you need to study there are other books that you can use as a reference or a supplementary material but in my experience if you the dm book book itself is more than sufficient uh, in terms of exam preparation the book is about 650 pages long it's a huge massive book uh, i would recommend that you read the book at least once cover to cover and then basis uh, these key topics uh, you then narrow down and focus on the areas that you would then have to prepare accordingly. A lot of this boils down to experience. So in my, so my practical experience at work is of data governance and data quality. So those are areas I'm very comfortable with, um, but I'm not very strong on the technical side. So for instance, data architecture or data warehousing, um, you know, so those are things that I realized early on that I need to focus and spend more time on because those are all 10%, 10% each uh, in terms of the questions that get asked. So you have to sort of do that analysis yourself. If you are on the technical side, on the IT side, uh, you're doing data warehousing, you're doing business intelligence, those are your strong suit. Uh, and if you have a number of years of experience, you'll find those areas easier to answer. So then your focus should be more on data governance, data quality, metadata management, those those kind of uh, areas. Let's pause here for any questions before I continue. OK, so um, the exam, uh, the exam fee is three hundred and eleven dollars, which is roughly around twenty three, uh, twenty three thousand rupees approximate uh, based on the currency, uh, the USD in INR currency. Uh, so you have to, so there's the associate level, there's practitioner, and there's master. If you get more than 80% uh, marks, or if you get more than 70% marks, what happens is you become eligible to write two additional specialist exams. So you can pick two, two topics of your choice. So you, the topic could be data governance, data modeling, data quality, whichever one you like. The base, the foundational exam is called data management fundamentals. That is mandatory for everybody to attempt. And that the, the fundamentals exam covers all of these areas that you see on the screen um, as of now. Once you pass your fundamentals exam, and if you get more than 70%, then you're eligible to write two additional exams. So basically, you can specialize in data governance or data architecture, data security. And you need to ensure that you get the same level of percentage of marks that you got in your fundamentals. So if, if I got 80% plus in my fundamentals and I've got 80% plus in my special, specialization exams, then overall I get a CDMP master. Yeah. So yeah, uh, how are the questions uh, decided? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I have a question. So uh, you said, right, uh, when you buy this exam and uh, uh, that allows you to do the practice, right? You get the practice test, right? Yeah. And you also shared that uh, there could, there are those questions will be similar, or maybe just for a reference purpose, or would that be also appearing in the exam? I think I heard you that if you're lucky, you might probably get that. Is that uh, something yes. that you experience yourself? Yes. One question or two question if you're really lucky. Oh, okay. I, think, I think I think in my case, I think probably one question uh, from uh, the practice exams did come and then there's practice exams that I attempted from Udemy. So Udemy has CDMP practice questionnaire. I think it's a 400 yeah. bank questionnaire. I think sure. there were about two or three questions that came from that practice uh, mm -hmm. sort of question mm -hmm. bank. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So uh, it's otherwise, uh, otherwise, how? what is your recommendation for people who are uh, looking for it? Uh, I mean, how, how and what should they look for? I mean, they can practice, but what what would they expect just so, on those lines yeah so the the 40 practice question bank uh, that is in the website the same website as where you will be giving the exam you know your proctored uh, exam so it sort of it's it basically in the same layout as mm -hmm. the real exam would be 
So if you would, I would strongly recommend doing the 40 practice question because you get used to the layout. Mm -hmm. And when you're reviewing the questions, you can actually flag each question. So let's say you're not very sure about the multi-choice answer for question 10. Mm -hmm. You can flag it. And then once you're done with all your 100 questions, you can come back to your flagged questions. So just to get yourself familiar with the layout, the content of the website and how the examination sort of looks like, from that point of view, purely, I think the practice exam is strongly recommended. Okay. So for, for the audience and so just for bringing clarity, right? Uh, are you saying that the exam question would be multiple choice or only a single choice? It's multiple choice. So Always they can accept a question where they have to select two or three answers, right answers, right? Yes, normally it is one answer, but it, you could also have, uh, you know, multi-choice ones that you may have to tick. Uh, and then you could have certain questions where every answer would look absolutely correct, but there would be one that says all of the above. Uh -huh. So exactly. the complexity differs. So 60% of all your questions are associate level difficulty. That means it's a straight, okay. more or less a straight lift shift from DMBOK. Okay, so if you're reading the DMBOK book and you studied from the DMBOK book, mm -hmm. you can more or less directly relate 60% of the questions from there. 20% are at practitioner level. So the questions won't be directly from DMBOK, but it will have a more practical bent of, uh, you know, uh, application. You know, so how would you apply a certain concept for data governance or data quality in practice? So it would sort of, it would, that would be embedded in the question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm and seeing a couple of more hands. Uh, uh, let's take that questions. Yeah. Uh, Samir, Samir, you have one, some questions you want to ask? Yeah, Sanjeev, thank you. Uh, Vijay, you mentioned that once somebody pays the fee, yeah, there would not be any time limit within which they can give the exam. But usually it would be something like, you know, you have one year or something. Some sort of limit is usually there for all the other exams. So is this that open-ended that if I were to pay today, I can give it any time in the future or there should be some upper limit, right? Yeah, uh, to, to, to the best, I could be wrong. To the best of my recollection, there is no upper limit. Yeah. Uh, but every few years, there's a new version of DMBOK come. It's, it's, uh, so that I know that there is a DMBOK 3 that is currently in the draft status. And sometime next year, perhaps, the DMBOK 3 version would come out. Yeah. So let's say if you are signing up for an exam today, I would <laughs> say that you finish the examination uh, within the same year before the DMBOK 3 version comes because then the whole content changes uh, slightly or significantly. So, sorry, just one follow-up question then. How yeah. often do they come up with a different version of the DMBOK? Is it like every year or two years? No. Any idea? It's, there have only been two versions so far. So version one, version two. And I think CDMP is around, has been around for probably 10 plus years or more. Okay. I'll, I'll add something to it. I was in one of the meeting where the, the biggest discussion was that, that how can we make it, uh, you know, relevant frequently because the version first and two has a huge gap. And now we are seeing the good gap between two and three also. So I think there is some kind of a, a discussion going on around uh, in the Dama International at that level. Uh, and they are looking to accelerate this process and make it much more frequent, not to make sure that they are making it like frequently like version four, but if something is changing in the world, because data is a really a ever changing world, they want to just make sure that they're relevant every time. That's the whole idea. So yes, they are planning to do that frequently. Going forward. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's move on then. I don't yeah. see any other hand. Yeah. So 20% of your questions would be master level difficulty. That means if you have had practical experience in any of those knowledge areas, you would find it easier to answer those questions. Okay, so that's how the difficulty of the exams are in terms of all the 100 questions. And like I said earlier before, if you pass with over 70% marks, you're eligible to continue your CDMP journey, journey to practitioner or master, right? Which means that you're eligible to do two specializations, right? So, and those two specialist exams are exams of your choice. Uh, the only additional requirement at the master level is that you need to have minimum 10 years of experience and you have to submit a CV for review, which will be reviewed by a CDMP fellow. Okay. 
Now, this is the book. So this is the Bible, Dharma, Diembok, and the link I've mentioned there is the official link of the publisher. Uh, so there's both the print and the PDF version. And I think if you buy both print and PDF, you get a, a, a discount. And there is a supplementary book called Navigating the Labyrinth. Uh, it is not required to buy it. Uh, I did buy it and I did find it quite useful. I think it's it's really, really useful if you're at a middle management or senior management level, especially at the executive level, uh, because it gives you a very crisp um, sort of summary of what data management is all about in different knowledge areas. Uh, so I have both the books that I bought, both print and PDF. Um, so yes, I mean, it's up to you in terms of what your preference or liking is. If you like a printed book, then I would recommend buying printed book. If you like a PDF, go for the PDF option. Yeah. Now some study preparation tips. Um, so we have a very active uh, Dharma India community. Um, and we have, uh, you know, most of us are connected through social media, LinkedIn and WhatsApp. And, uh, you know, the community members are open to helping others, to guide others. There are uh, a lot of community members recently who have passed the exam. Uh, Hemant passed the exam recently. Uh, there were other one or two people, I don't recall the names, uh, who, who passed the exam. So you can reach out to any one of us. We're more than happy to share, share the experience, uh, you know, and I would, recommend and encourage all of you to join the Dharma India chapter uh, because that's that's how we can build the community. Uh, like I said earlier before, read the DMBOK book, preferably cover to cover once. Uh, I know it's a really long book, 650 pages, and those of you who are not habituated to reading may find that difficult, so you may want to break it down into smaller comp components. Uh, Prepare well in advance, uh, you know, uh, preparation is key. It takes about two to three months average in my experience. Uh, this could vary from individual to individual. Uh, definitely make use of the 40 questions practice exam, like I said before. Um, Udemy has a practice exam. So there are two practice exams in Udemy. Uh, there is one which is the higher rated module. I think it's got a four plus rating. Uh, the lower rated one is uh, the feedback that I've seen, the feedback comments I've seen on uh, Udemy is not that good. The higher rated one is excellent. It has about 400 plus questions and about two or three questions from that came in the real exam for me. So I guess I was probably lucky, but it does give you a really good view of what kind of questions you can expect for each of those areas. Then comes the boot camp. Uh, so hey Vijay, just to interrupt yeah. and add to your last statement, uh, didn't mean to delay yeah. this, Sorry. but those two uh, Udemy uh, thing that you talked about, one yeah. got uh, you know somehow removed. Uh, looks like there was uh, some concern. Uh, oh. So I noticed that that's no more uh, visible or available for people to buy. So just a caution, uh, wanted to let everybody know. Uh, so guys, uh, look at what is available. Uh, but what he's talking about is definitely not there. Uh, in case of me, I think I saw that. So just want to let you know. So. Okay, I, I know somebody at Udemy, so I can check if they've removed that content. Oh, that's very unfortunate because that, yeah, the yeah. higher rated uh, practice exam in Udemy was excellent. Excellent, yep, yeah. right. And Udemy always has a sale. You know, there's a Diwali sale, Christmas sale, month end sale. So you could get it for very very, cheap, yeah. very very reasonable cost you know very, it could be like as reasonable as two or three hundred rupees or, or four hundred rupees uh, you know i got yeah. it around roughly 525 uh, during yeah. the diwali sale yeah and i think i think we were more meaner than this uh, what we did is that somebody bought in our group and then we just did uh, co-learning co together so i think so that's the way to build community guys uh, the idea is that okay i mean you can buy and then the one person can present and we all can participate brainstorm do those stuff so i think we did that uh you know uh really well so that is also recommended i mean again your choice so yeah let's move on then. okay so uh the next is boot camp uh now the dharma does not mandate that you need to attend the boot camp training for this uh, cdmp certification is uh, completely optional uh there are multiple uh impaneled uh you know uh, vendors who provide uh, the, the the boot camp training uh, so just a disclaimer, I had attended uh, Chris Bradley's uh, boot camp, uh, which was a three-day boot camp sometime in October. 
Uh, there are other uh, boot camp uh, you know providers as well there's one in south africa um, which is called modelware systems they are excellent as well and in fact uh, modelware uh, you know on their linkedin a few months back had made their uh, revision module for cdmp available free of cost uh, you know for anybody um, uh, to attend and I had actually attended that, uh, you know, it was just conducted by Veronica Diesel. Um, and I found that an excellent uh, refresher course. It's a, it was a one day refresher course, quite intense. And uh, after, so it's the, the way that refresher courses is, is uh, sort of uh, built is, you know, they will take you through each of these knowledge areas. And after completing uh, sort of uh, each knowledge area, there is a a, a mini question or a mini quiz that you have and then you get to answer those questions and then you can rate yourself and see how well you've answered the questions so in my in my case uh, because i practically because i do data governance data quality at work um, i pretty much got a eight or nine out of ten in in those kind of topics uh, you know like reference data master data management but on the more technical side like data architecture uh, data modeling data warehousing i got like a four or a five out of ten and that's and and uh, that that's because those areas are very challenging for me. So I knew that I had to focus, uh, sort of double down and and study hard more along uh, in those areas. So uh, that that refresher course was an eye opener for me. Uh, I was preparing earlier for about a month, month and a half, two months, um, and then I decided that I wanted to attend a boot camp. Uh, the boot camp was excellent. Uh, it takes you through all of these knowledge areas. Uh, so you have three day boot camps, four day boot camps. Uh, so it's ab absolutely optional if you want to attend. The one that I attended was a boot camp from Chris Bradley, which included the examination fees as well. Um, so yeah, so uh, it's totally optional. I think with that, we pretty much come to the end of uh, this my presentation um so i'm open to any questions yeah vijay uh, i have one uh, so uh, since you told that uh, the badge will be you know valid for three years so after three years what i mean we need to recertify uh, or you know reappear for the exam or uh, we need to pay some fees and then it would you know get automatically valid um i think there are certain professional um uh, data management uh, sort of events or webinars you need to attend. You need to evidence in terms of your con continuous uh, professional learning. Uh, I'm not sure if we need to attempt another exam. I think Sanjeev or somebody else can clarify. Yeah, I think there's a continuous learning that is expected and we'll have yeah. to submit that we have been doing that. Uh, I think uh, what, what we can do is that we can go ahead and check Devendra. Just don't take that answer as a real answer today. I'll take the action item on me and then come back and you know, personally update you and this group as well. Okay, sure, thank you. Yeah. Samira, you have a question? Samir, yeah. sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Vijay, uh, you mentioned that you've been working in data governance for quite a while and that obviously helped you during this exam. So yeah. I was just wondering, after giving this exam and going through all this study material, yeah. How much benefit were you able to get in your actual day-to-day -day work? Did it help in, you know, uh, clearing stuff up at work or giving you some new insights how to approach things? Yeah, so it it, it makes your foundation quite strong. You know, it, um, it sort of reinforces what you already ha have learned or what you're already doing at work, especially if you've attended data governance webinars and if you're doing data governance in practice. Um, and, and the overall structure of how a data governance office is set up, what, what activities a data governance team performs, uh, what are the things you need to bear in mind when you do data governance. So those kind of things uh, really sort of come to the fore. Uh, and then a lot of it is practically applying data governance. That The how of it may not, I mean, how you, how you actually get, get down to doing it, that only comes from experience and actually doing it but it builds a foundation it builds a base for you and data governance is interlinked to data quality and then you have the rest of the knowledge areas also all interconnected so you may be strong in one or two areas but then you may not know how well it's integrated to the rest of the knowledge area so it sort of gives you that complete 360 view okay. 
Very that was an excellent question, Samir. I think, I think that is always a question. Uh, yeah. with how much this theory uh, helps you to be practically effective yeah. on day-to-day -day one, day-to-day uh, -day job is is excellent way of you know putting things together. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you really see, and there is one more question, so I will club that. Uh, and uh, Vijay, you can share your thought. I saw. I'm also seeing questions on the chat here, right? So let me read one for you, which is kind of related with uh, you know your reflection on the technicality. So Chandan is asking a question, which of this topic would be uh, technical and not technical? So I'm assuming that this was a question asked when on this page, yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, so the more technical ones, uh, so I, my, my background was operations, business analysis, change management. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not an IT person, I've never learned coding. Uh, so the technical ones would be uh, your data warehousing, <laughs> then your data architecture, uh, storage and operations to some extent, but m mostly I would say data architecture uh, and then data warehousing. Yeah, those are those are quite highly technical. Absolutely, I, I would also add uh, security because uh, it basically talks about those terminology which might kind of uh, you know uh, make you think. Uh, yeah, and then uh, data warehousing, uh, where you will get to those terms like OLAP and uh, MOLAP and OLAP and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. uh, that would be interesting because there are a lot of architecture diagram in it, which tells you that how that things flow and which system, analytical system, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, I will add. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously uh, after you know, VJ that because he has recently gone through. But CDMP as such uh, do not uh, differentiate between the technical and non-technical. It is thoroughly uh, a, a, a guide which tells you at the very uh, high level. It doesn't get deeper into any of the technical subject, by the way. So mostly you will get definition, which is uh, good enough to consume and move on with the first level of exam, uh, which is nothing but your foundation. Right. So I think that would be uh, the way to look at it, uh, Chandan. I have one more question uh, on the chat. I will read and then after that, we'll go to Nishu because she's having a question. What is after clearing the exam and having the I mean, having the batch? Uh, how much recognition, uh, how much recognized the certificates is benefit and impact for the career in case uh, of non-technical. Uh, I think the question is that how uh, valuable this certification and this effort is because obviously there is a money involved. We have to invest. I mean, yeah. not everybody can get a sponsored or not everybody can probably get into the those boot camps, right? But they have to probably really work, work hard, right? So what is the return on investment? That's a simple way to look at this question. Yeah, I think uh, CDMP now, especially over the last one year, you know, uh, I've, I'm, I've been noticing on LinkedIn and, and social media and these data governance webinars and events, there's a lot more people doing CDMP. It's getting increasingly recognized as the go-to certification for data management professionals. Uh, so it's just like your other industry body certifications, like your PMP or your CBAP, uh, it gives uh, your current employer and, and a prospective employer uh, sort of a, a reassurance that this candidate or this individual has a foundational knowledge in data management, you know, and obviously you can specialize. Um, a lot of companies are quite liberal with their, uh, you know, tuition policy, education policy. So if you have, um, you know, you can leverage that to sort of do the certification. You can, uh, you know, speak to your managers about this and ask them if they can fund this course. Right, um, and you can see that a lot of your counterparts, if you're working in a in in a MNC kind of an environment or a or a or a bank or a, or a big firm which has uh, regions in the UK and US, you would see that your counterparts, your or your colleagues, it's possible that some of them may have done CDMP certification. So you can ask them to speak on your behalf to management to get that sponsored for you. Perfect, uh, Nishu, you have. I mean, you can go ahead with your question. I think. Thanks, Indy. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, mine is not really a question, but like, uh, you know, I really like Samir's question on whether this would add value to you know, your everyday work or not, because I think it's a very cost intensive exercise to really take the training and really appear for the exam. So that's a very valid question. So um, I based on like my, uh, I haven't yet taken the exam myself, but I have gone uh, through the chapters. So I can tell you that each of the chapters, uh, whichever specific topic it pertains to, really answers 
what or about that topic and not how so okay. just so that you know that's uh, that's something that's uh, a mental preparation for you so uh, in terms of but yeah like it does uh, form the foundation but yeah I, at the same time i think i i would like to reemphasize uh, the whole purpose of a community in that case because i think uh, four of us got together and we were going through like we would decide on each of the chapters for for a week and then we would discuss and you know go through some set of questions that were available and that really kind of helped us prepare and also get you know there would be a discussion which would kind of you know help us cross learn in terms of like one would be a specialized uh, person in one area and i would let's say uh, you know no more of some other area and that's where we would get into a discussion and really get the practical aspects of you know what goes behind the scenes and which would really kind of aid in your uh, you know understanding of that topic which would help you in your everyday work so a huge uh, kind of uh, you know emphasis that i would give uh, to the community part there absolutely i think yeah. uh, you you see shambhu very well right the how piece is not there that is also a good topic of discussion that we have experienced we have seen people asking and there are a lot of people who you would probably go and talk they will say it will tell you everything but the how piece depends on the organization for example my organization will have a completely different situation scenario my motivation for data governance could be definitely you know uh, could be different than your and then how i put it uh, put those pieces together is going to differ hence uh, this guide is basically just like uh, you know uh, you know right uh, project management pmbok similar you it will tell you how to approach uh, uh, what to do and all of those in terms of the theory but then practically you have to Put your house in place. Uh, just to add, uh, Vijay, you yeah. were saying something when I spoke. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what Nishu was saying. The, the how part is isn't there. Yeah. So the way to look at it is, you, you get to understand. So if you take data governance, what the components of data governance are, and then the DOM, the DMBOK talks about policies. The DMBOK talks about data maturity assessments. But how do you write a policy document? How do you write a standards document? how do you practically conduct a data maturity assessment what yes. templates do you need to use uh, how do you how do you sort of kick start that what meetings do you need to sort of uh, formulate that part is in there yes so but it does give you a foundational knowledge yeah okay, let's take a couple of more questions uh, uh, pundeep singh uh, i think you are raising a hand and then we have uh, vishnu prashant as well. yeah. so let's start with pundeep yeah thanks and you and thanks vijay for putting this together really appreciate that yeah. okay uh i just have a couple of questions and uh, probably vijay but they are primarily geared toward your experience and what you have mentioned in the deck i'm i'm audible right vijay yes yes, yes. You are audible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the first question that, that i really wanted to understand is that you mentioned that you were given uh, lucky enough to have the opportunity of spending uh, 2000 usd and then going for that training course whether personally sponsored or it's again uh, the personal preferences but the question i wanted to understand is let's assume that you take a step back you are not having the opportunity of attending the boot camp do you really yeah. think that dm box 2 is sufficient to clear this exam if i go what and wonderful question vijay uh, wonderful <laughs> question Because everybody is not gonna. Okay, I yeah. live in Singapore. For me, it's a conversion currency, and then I can certainly uh, foot the bill. But not everybody, and the motivation also goes down the moment you uh, put a tag of two thousand dollar on a training, and then there is an uncertainty of not passing it. The yeah, question sir. of the day. Thank you very much for raising this, Vijay. What are your thoughts? It's a couple of things. Sixty uh, percent of your questions are pretty much at the associate level. uh so i don't think passing is would be a a big challenge it's more about would you be passing at the associate level or the practitioner level or master level and i'm sure all everybody who's attempting it would be aiming for the maximum which is a master yes. level yeah so um uh, i think you you can definitely through self preparation you can definitely pass the exam it also boils down to your experience right mm-hmm. so i have about 15 years of experience so somebody would say who's just entered the data management for profession with about 2 to 3 years of experience they would find the uh practitioner and the master level questions difficult which is 20% each and 20% each okay okay but they would find the 60% of the associate questions more relatively easier to answer because it's pretty much a straight lift shift more or less from dmbok 
and then plus you have the open book so i can tell you i finished so 100 100 questions in 90 minutes i finished my exam in about half that time wow uh, uh, and this is i mean don't take this as a standard <laughs> that yeah, everybody yeah, exactly. would everybody finish. has but, uh, yeah. if you um, i think when i when i started the exam i was a little tense and then i sort of then had to tell myself calm down take it easy and then as i sort of was at the 10th or the 15th question i, I found my pace and i kept going at it i, mm -hmm. I flagged the questions but i was unsure of the answer and then when i finished everything i came back and then i i sort of did an open book and I would say it made a difference about for about four or five questions. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. yeah. So the other question, just uh, I think uh, you have already touched upon that a bit, but I just wanted to do a follow up question. Like associate yeah. level, okay, we are done and dusted. Incidentally, somebody has scored 80 or 90 or whatever percentage. I'm, I'm not even getting into that. The only question that I have is, I uh, let's assume take my example. I did follow the DM walk. I cleared it. Eighty percent scored. Now for the practitioner, as you mentioned, I can select data governance or anything as a matter of fact out of the given topics. How do I prepare for that? What book I can refer? Or do we re really start going for a wild goose chase wherein we have twenty books on data management, data governance, and we go through yeah. that? There are there are certifications like that. To be honest with you, yeah. which gave a trend list of. 100 books and they say okay we can ask you anything from that so and another i'm not saying that you should have the knowledge i'm just uh, picking yeah. up your brain whatever your thoughts are this is your experience it's the same book the syllabus is the same it's it's yeah. your dmbop book so for all your specialist exams it's dmbop that is your ultimate guide um, the only thing is the specialist is very uh, intensely focused on that area of specialization so if you're doing data governance all your questions are going to be from data governance but what Dharma says is that you have to study the entire book because data governance, again, is linked to data uh, quality and it's linked to right. other areas. So you have Make to study the book overall, but your uh, intense focus should be on data governance. I haven't done a specialization exam so far. I've just done the, fu uh, the fundamentals of data yeah. management exam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pradeep, I will I will add a few things here, right? Uh, I did not intentionally prepare for this question, but somehow I don't know. Uh, two days back, I was looking at the book and I just it just came into my mind that okay what would uh, happen if somebody need to go beyond this the first level right what would it what would they do because i have never got the answer this clear answer for this question uh, okay. but uh, my 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 it's me thinking right i looked at the book and if you look at the book right these people when they wrote the dm walk they took a lot of references from a lot of book so at right. end of the every chapter if you have the pdf and i think you have because you are certified you should have so if you go look at the book uh, in the in the in the, in the at the end of the every book right you will see a lot of references right so mm -hmm. i purposefully looked at a couple of things like for for that chapter data governance what are the book that they looked at and i think if you're not getting any idea right picking a book from there would be a good one overall okay. may not be needed like we just said if you still read this fully you can probably still clear that but uh, that would be me uh, yeah, yeah, actually, that makes sense. That's a very good suggestion, uh, you, because yeah. if I, let's assume that I pick up data governance and then I say, okay, I I still feel don't feel that confident because we don't know what is going to be asked. So then right. probably we can look at the references at the end of the chapter yeah. and pick up one or two books, time permitting, go through whatever you can and then build upon that. Yeah. One more thing that I do, I think I will share that. Uh, uh, I'm I'm sure you may have heard about Mike 2.0. Anybody heard about it? The reason I also follow that and then geography is also there, but I look at the mic 2.0 because uh, that is a very good reference for practical purposes. Uh, it's not very popular, but uh, I truly believe that there is no one way to do data governance. It is it is probably your need and you have to tweak it up for your organization, for your need, right? So uh, there are a lot of practical uh, examples or guidance are there. So go to mic, mic 2.0, look at the knowledge area and section, go to the data sections and then try to see there are some templates, there are some, uh, you know, capability assessment models, there is access sheet that you can look at and you can build upon that access sheet. For example, what they're giving you, take it, but look at your situation, add those questions and it will still produce the result. So, so on and so forth. I think uh, we can talk someday on the mic 2.0, but I have personally found it very, very helpful. So I just want to share a lot of people here. Uh, maybe you can spread. Uh, that we should also look at that piece but add, add additional knowledge 
for foundation, I think you're good with EM Pong, definitely. Uh, if you really want to know more, then you can go to my 2.0. Okay. Also good, Sanjeev, if you could please type in that uh, link in the just chat. Just mike2.0. Yes. Yes. You're right. Uh, let okay. me just, I just, while we were talking, I just. Did Thanks, Gaurav Shankar. Okay. Yes. So, yes. anybody yes. who have seen that, I think I love yes. this. Uh, so, personally, you know, but let's talk about that. Let's make it a topic uh, someday uh, to let's see how uh, people got benefited. And maybe I will learn a little bit more. But I think I would love to have some discussion on that. But okay. that is for another day. Shall we go to uh, uh, Vishnu Prasad Purandip for good? Yeah, time? yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much for uh, clarifying those and uh, sharing your insight. I really appreciate yeah. it. So another request that I have, Sanjeev, from you is that I understand there are some groups, WhatsApp groups and all. If you can share the links for those, we will be more than happy to join. Or if there is any Facebook group or something. Yeah, there is a group. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I take my word back. Group, not group, but there is a page. Uh, mm -hmm. But we are finding the, you know, we are trying to optimize that piece because I always feel that one-sided communication is not good. Uh, and the LinkedIn page has limitation that it is only one-sided where I can post and you can comment or okay. people can comment. But I want to create a group where both side communication can happen. You can start a post and post it, right? That is what yes. we want. So I'm, okay. we are working on that and we'll try to shift that piece and we'll invite everybody. Thank so you very much. After this call, there will be a small survey that will go that will help me probably collect some input about this whole process and also uh, again keeping the privacy and data protection that we follow we will keep the ids intact not sharing sure. for any other purposes but it will help us invite you so please thank you there. thank you okay vishnu uh, vishnu prashad please your question hi 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 sanjeev uh, hi vijay yeah hi. it's a uh... Very good morning, and it's a powerful day. It's a very wonderful uh, discussion. Uh, I tried. I tried to join all the uh, data kind of uh, this kind of uh, discussions forum. Uh, to be honest with you, right? I've been practicing on the data modeling. Been more than uh, more than a decade now. Um, I've been working with many, many type of data models. So still I'm half the way. So uh, in the data management side, uh, data governance management said I'm little low. I, I mean, I'm, I'm still experiencing and exploring. Uh, so uh, the CDMP certification, uh, it is a good path for us for sure. However, a few things uh, in my mind, right? Um, uh, do this CDMP certification is actually uh, it's, it's kind of the reinforcements learning like uh, they actually uh, giving the way the, the latest and greatest like data uh, strategy coming into picture. Are they actually uh, upgrading their syllabus or something? Uh, so I think this was the question asked earlier in the chat as well. Uh, from what I know is that there's a DMBOP 3 currently in the draft version. And I know this because I attended Chris Bradley's bootcamp training. And uh, Chris uh, is a CD CDMP fellow, and he is uh, one of the authors of the DMBOP book. So what he communicated to us was that there is currently a version in draft. Uh, it's a huge consultative process. There are multiple people who would review it. Uh, you know, it needs to be thoroughly then vetted. And I'm guessing probably later this year or early next year, the DMBOP 3 would be published. We don't have any news as of now as to when it would be published. The only thing I know is that it's currently in the draft version. Yeah, uh, why the question is right? Data governance, right? It's, it's not, yeah. it's a multi fest journey. Yeah. It's not one fest. The thing is that we are actually uh, taking care of all the way of the data sites on that management, modeling, yeah. uh, uh, whatnot, like quality, mass data, all, all the stuff. Uh, so, uh, uh, another follow up question there, like, uh, as I told, right, I I am very much experienced on that modeling perspective and the engineering perspective, right? I am purely into the technical uh, side. So uh, if I will be, if I am not actually experienced on the MDM or the data quality or very less experience, uh, if I go through the CDMP course, uh, will it actually uh, fill the gap? Or, uh, or if it is filling a gap, uh, so uh, can I get like on the tool specific also or only the um, uh, the subject area only? It's more subject area. So it will sort of 
uh, tell you what data governance is, you know, the, what the data governance structure looks like. Uh, yeah. So you have to plan and you design and enable, you create and obtain. So that entire cycle of data governance, you get to understand. Uh, tooling yeah. aspect is not really uh, there, you know. I agree. Yeah. 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 To tooling is not there, but it will yeah. certainly fill the gap in terms of uh, you feeling that now, uh, as compared to the earlier state where you are less aware, probably you'll be yeah. more aware. And you might also find a way that, okay, well, how do I compensate that or maybe enhance that with some yeah. kind of a tool uh, that you can inculcate? Uh, it's kind of tool agnostic approach, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely. the right word, tool agnostic approach. This whole yeah. book is a tool agnostic. Uh, yeah. They do talk about tool. So there yeah. is a section in every book that tells you that how do you perform that activity? And that, exactly. that's when they talk about tool also. But they are, not endorsing. They are not endorsing any tool. It's, yeah. it's kind of recommendation whether yeah. you like it or uh, yeah, it's, no, okay. it's, we, have, we have to find the fit for purpose that way. Yes, yes. Yeah. One so, question that came somehow it is not visible busy. I'll just read it for you, but looks like yeah. it has to be answered by me. Uh, the question is that how do we participate in uh, you know uh, this community? Uh, there was a request and then looks like uh, you know uh, uh, Elias is looking for the next step. I think I saw his question. So uh, the whole idea is that uh, there is a website. Uh, Dama India or uh, there you can obviously go and show your interest and then uh, what we do is that we definitely talk to the person it is a good idea to put your profile LinkedIn profile we look at that uh, not because we want to scrutinize just because we want to know more about you and then you know, uh, just uh, you know uh, I let that particular process flow as fast as possible uh, being in India we all kind of work for a company and then we have this time frame when we try to address and come back and get back to everybody as much as possible. So if there's any delay, I'm personally sorry about it, but if, uh, you know, I will have to go and look at it and then address that particular cases. But the process is to uh, go through the website, fill in the form, uh, give your, you know, some idea about yourself and then we'll uh, continue the process with you. So that is the standard way to, to, to become part of this community. Otherwise you have a page, so you can also be a fan instead of committing. That is also true, fine. Because there are a lot of people who are just a fan. There are very few people who are a committed or a little more than fan, right? So what happens, right? You can still go ahead and contribute on the page, comment, uh, participate, learn. That is also perfectly all right. Because in a way, we are still getting a lot of benefit from you because you like it, right? So again, it's very open and flexible, please. Yeah, Sanjeev, uh, Rabi will hear. So I think, uh, uh, we, we have to, you know, for the audience who wants to join in the Dama community. So, so the Dama member, right? So there are opportunity also. So uh, if people are go to the website and find that information, um, uh, so for to, to become a Dama India member. And other thing as everyone, uh, as Vijay clearly explained the importance of the CDMP book, right? Uh, for the uh, to refer for the CDMP examination, sorry, DM Bog book for DMBOG. CDMP examination. Uh, so from Dama India also, you will get a discounted price for the CDMP. Uh, sorry, DM Bog, DM Bog. So that also you, you just go to the website and fill in the form, then you will get the reply. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we are very close to the time. I am very very you know proud of this session. Reason being that it is so interactive. Uh, everybody, you uh, know, basically had some other questions. Hopefully it helped. Uh, Vijay has been fantastic uh, in terms of talking about his experiences. I took some clip, posted it because I liked it. The whole idea is that how you can get that stage, how you can probably, you know, uh, be in open in front of everybody. You can definitely work on your thought leadership out here. Uh, you can be known to better community and people. That's the whole idea. Because Otherwise, I truly believe that everybody present here are knowledgeable, intelligent, uh, and the expert in their area. But uh, we definitely need a stage. We definitely need uh, that brand and so on and so forth. We also do help there uh, with this kind of a forum. Uh, so there is definitely a win-win, uh, given that you are you know, also reciprocating and you know, taking it along. So please, I do you know, encourage you to uh, participate and help us. Right? Hey, so hey, thanks, Sanjeev. Last comment? Yeah, thanks, Sanjeev and Vijay. Uh, yeah, I would request, right, okay, can we actually uh, keep this forum more active? Uh, so it's like uh, very often is it, we need that kind of uh, session so we can actually learn from each other. 
Great. So there is a plan. Uh, I'm. There is a plan to keep it uh, every uh, last Saturday of the month. Yeah, perfect. Uh, with yeah. some topic uh, that that in this kind of a setup we can discuss and benefit and help each other. Right. That's the whole idea. Vijay, any parting thoughts? Because it's your show. I don't want to steal anything away from there. So please. No problem. Yeah. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to present uh, some amazing questions. I hope I was able to answer most of your questions. Uh, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer any questions I, I may not have in this session. Uh, lastly, I, I hope this session inspired you in some way to attend the CDMP exam. Please don't feel intimidated by this exam. Even if you're a beginner in the data management field or if you're an experienced professional, it is a valuable certification. It shows that you have foundational skills. It's a certification that's increasingly getting noticed uh, in, you know, uh, globally. It is globally recognized. So, so yes, please give it your all. Uh, you know, and, and if you're taking up the exam, my best wishes. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we will uh, talk soon. Uh, I will. I'm also taking a you no know, dump of this question. So anything missed, which I will forward to you because you definitely would like to answer, and or we, we can together try. Right. Okay. Sure. Perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.